All right, welcome back to my channel. Today, guys, today. <laughs> we have, we have been, dang it, Leanna, I got to hold on. You got the big freaking screen, the things on. So I got to move it to where when I lean into my microphone, I'm not leaning out of frame. Am I, am I leaning? There we go. Leanna, we have been oh. talking without filming for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe this done. is why it took four months to actually talk about the books that I chose for you in July. <laughs> you no, know, this happens every time like I don't see my friends for a while and then we get together like for a purpose and then we don't ever do the thing we're supposed to do because we end up catching up because it's been forever since we've seen each other. That's what happened. We haven't talked. So what you're forever. saying is that you got all of your yelling and fighting and insulting out of your yell system. Or insult you. And now you'll be course. civil to me. In I didn't yell at or insult you. And since I we're not like filming, yelling. since and <laughs> since we're not filming the one where we talk about the books that you read right now, I will have recharged all of my wrath, wrath. By the time. I mean, the thing is, though, that the last time you yelled at me, it was about the books I picked for you. So. Oh, was it? It's about Ember in the Ashes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You cannot give that five stars and then give Gargars three. You can't. It's <sighs> nice. It's not I possible. mean, in fairness, if I read Ember in the Ashes now, I maybe I'd give it four. I don't know what I'd give it. I don't think it'd be five. When did you give it five stars? Were when you I read it. Were you a years old girl? No, but it was like three years ago. Three years ago. Who are you? All right. What are we doing? What are we doing? Well, so today, doing? guys, today <laughs> I'm talking to Alan, my good nemesis from the Library of Alexandria. Back Sorry. in July, little We're history lesson for you guys. The little history lesson. Back in July, we chose each other's TBRs, and I read the books that were assigned to me because I am the Hermione, and you so did I. didn't. <laughs> we did. I read all of them. Not in July, though. That's correct. In July, <laughs> I read one of them. Two of them. I read two of them in July. You only read one of them in July, though, because you had also double dipped and made it the shelf space book of books that you had to read it. So, that, what? How does that make it? I didn't read two of them in July. I definitely read two of them in July. You did. I did. I just and then it took you an additional three months to read the other two. That's correct. That is correct. But I did read them all. So we're going to talk about them today. Full spoilers, so FYI, I that will try to sense. mark spoilers um, yeah. as best I can, but they'll be chaotically placed, no doubt. So I can't just put a giant black screen to warn you about this every time Alan decides I'll to give you a spoiler. I will try. <laughs> if I'm talking spoilers. I will, I will say, hey, I'm about to talk spoilers, and then that will mark it for you, and then okay. everyone will know. Okay. Then that's the plan, and we will stick to it. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about them in the order in which you read them, in the order which that you liked them, in the order in which the alphabetical? How are you going to do it when we do the other one? However you wish me to. No, you can pick. Just pick pick the format, and then you can we can both follow that. I one. mean, when I do mine, it'll probably be in the order which I remember them best because it's been like three to four months. If you <laughs> so... can't remember books, then you have bad book retention, and you should stop listening to audiobooks on three times speed. You just jelly. I mean, I am. I am. <laughs> I could read more books. Like, I've read, guys, I have read not two books this month. I have, I have read, read like 20. You're awful. Like, you're so freaking awful. Like, just, just, I need you to come here and I need you to come and teach these children whatever you know. I don't know Latin. You, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't know Latin either. Um, Can I just and, read Ember in the Ashes to them? No, just te teach them something you know. I don't know what you know. I know. What, you, what is your job? <laughs> Wait, HR? no, you okay, this is related to Latin because when I would tell people when I was a kid that I'm Latvian, they would say, you're Latin? So I can just teach them Latvian because that's the same thing is what I learned. I guarantee you my children do not know that Latvia is even a country. And if they did, they would not know where it is. Most um, people don't. I got... You need to understand, Leanna, every year we translate a sentence beginning of the year. It's in the opening passage. It says, est Grecia in Europa? And they're like, I'm like, what does it mean? They're like, is Greece in Europe? I'm like, yes. Now, raise your hand if you think that, que that if you think the answer to that question is yes. Is Greece in Europe? About half every year, 50%. Only 50% can say confidently that Greece is in Europe. Greece. I mean, in fairness to them, a lot of teachers ask trick questions, so they might be cautiously thinking it might. That be is one hundred percent correct. In fact, I have discovered 
the best way, and I do this all the time, the best way to get a bright, like a smart, you know, gets all A's kid. The best way to get a smart kid to change his answer or her answer is to say, are you sure? After they give a response. Like, even when it's right, I just straight face. They, they give me a, a correct answer and I say, are you sure? And they're like, no. And they switch it. I'm like, you're right. Sorry, idiot. Move on. That's cruel, Alan. That's cruel. My class, they know my class is an exercise in psychological uh, and uh, psychological um, trauma and fear. I just, I like, can't wait for you to read First Law and identify with Glockta, the torturer. I feed the results of the um, anxiety inducing experiments that I create in my classroom to top scientists. And what do they do with this information? They run publish, Instagram ads based on this? They publish it in a study. And I don't know. Get, what do you do? For, what do you do for your job? Like, what do you, what, what are the things that you know about? What are, you <laughs> what are the doing? things that I know about? Um, accounting and HR. Oh my gosh. So how to lie in a job interview. You can teach them that. That's probably a more useful skill when I'm teaching them. Right. You should never lie in a job interview. No, you absolutely. Job interviews are meant to be lied in. Mm -mm. It's a, uh, I always like to say that uh fey rules apply. Everything you should, everything you say should always be technically true. They want you to lie. When they say, what's your greatest weakness? They do not want you to say, well, I procrastinate a lot and I'm sometimes easily overwhelmed. No, but what you say that. should be technically true. But that is, that is, what, what if that is your greatest weakness? Your what I mean, your greatest life. weakness according to who? That's, that's not a hard and fast thing. There's no official what is your greatest weakness. So I should say I care too much? I work yeah. too hard? According to some metrics, that might be. I mean, after yeah. our like five hour long catch up session, I do think that you care too much and that is your greatest weakness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can never actually say that because it sounds, it's so fake. It's so fake. Leanna, why are we here? We're Congratulations, guys. About You've come books. to, this is a tavern. You've come to. You Leanna. said you wanted to just do a fireside chat like 10 hours ago when we started. You're like, well, right. we'll just record this. So this we're is doing it. Leanna's apothecary where you can come in and you can grab a cold drink. Oh, the for... cold drink is LaCroix. And I know Alan's or, favorite. You can also get coffee for two copper. You can also get a lot of coffee here. It's just, you know, I tend to drink coffee in the AM. This is decaf, Leanna. Oh, you do that too? Okay, I do have a bunch of decaf that I drink in the evening. I, like, I, I, just, I just like the taste of coffee. Same. Yeah, Same. Right on. Okay, we have an accord on something. <laughs> that being said, let's go talk. Let's talk about, fine, in the order which I remember them. Let's just go in the order I read them. The wolf was first. Well, wasn't Ember in the Ashes first? No, I read Yes. <laughs> I'm a yeah. bigger expert on you than you. You're right. I don't remember anything. Uh, so, Ember in the Ashes. Ember in the Ashes. Tell me why it's absolutely the worst book ever. It wasn't the worst. I, gave it, I, didn't, I don't even think they gave it two stars. They gave it three. I didn't give anything two stars that you made me read. <laughs> Unlike you. Um, three, Should uh, I pick better books? Ugh, get out of here with that nonsense. If I had read, if I had not already chosen them, I would have made you read Folding Knife. Um, anyway. That's by uh, Parker. Adrian Tchaikovsky? Mm -mm, KJ Parker. It's the one that is literally about politics and economics. And it has I would probably like that. And it has a super cynical worldview. Which, yeah, I would absolutely like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Parker is like, I don't know. Sometimes, he, I don't know. Sometimes his humor is like a more... Sometimes it's not it's not meant to be as funny as like Pratchett is, but sometimes the humor that is in it mm -hmm. feels like a mean spirited Terry Pratchett. Well, and I mean, even in because I I've read uh, Prosper's Demon and yeah. I started oh. reading Sixteen Ways to Defend a Walled City, and even oh. the beginning of Sixteen Ways to Defend a Walled City, there's a lot of moments where like it feels like it's cynically sarcastically poking fun at sort of the way like in Dickens you have like the office of circumlocution yeah. and how like that never goes anywhere and the whole point of it is that it doesn't and the bureaucracy of it and it feels literally, like he's like poking fun literally at Literally every both Parker books I've read have been exactly like that. Yeah. yeah. They're 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 good. Uh 16 16 ways is 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 his most accessible. It's his most popular by far. Um It's also the name of it it is appealing. <laughs> yeah, 16 ways from the Wall City. Um anyway, um Ember in the Ashes. I give it three stars. Um I so I like the premise of Ember in the Ashes. And I think That's what well, I thought you would like about and it. And I think it's well written. I do think it's well written. I think Tahir is a good is a good writer. <laughs> I'm not certain she's a fantastic storyteller. Um, you know why. I like, 
things that I like about it. It is very, very brisk. I read it very quickly, like super. It's YA. Fast. Yeah, it was. But I mean, some YA get bogged down because it's so dumb. Like it wasn't dumb. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't stupid. Mm -hmm. It was just pr super predictable for me. Like I, every time I'm like, oh, come on, come on, make the different choice. Make the, make the bold choice to hear. No, she went with the she went with the YA choice. The gotta match. There's the some pretty choice. dark turns in the later books. Oh, okay. Well, in this one, again, I'll get to the stuff I didn't like in a minute. Um, but I did like I did like the I do like the world as kind of like um, it's the first book in a series, so you can't have an opinion yeah, until right. you read all you're of right. them. It feels like the, it feels like a it feels like a Roman invasion of like Persia. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like West. Which it's meant to be kind of in taking its inspiration from that vibe. Yeah, um, because, you know, there's lots of kind of East Middle Eastern uh, mythology stuff going on while the empires, clearly the Romans or whatever, and they, you know, uh, punch out the scholars, which which felt to me. So it felt to me like the Romans going down into like Syria, Judea, mm -hmm. um, and like the scholars to me felt like the felt kind of like the Jews. Um to me um just it just gave me that vibe from 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 i mean you know, i don't think they're meant to be like a one-to-one -one any specific yeah. but just sort of like the general type of people that got invaded and the general type of correct people and, and the stuff that's going on in that time period with the romans and everything with like you know stopping them from doing the stuff that they used to do and things like that so that's that's the kind of vibe i've got so i really did like that and i did like the the, the djinn that appeared um in it somewhere and I like the idea of, I mean, most of these, a lot of these YA books, they're fine as long as you don't pull on the string that's hanging off the sweater. Because who would decide an emperor the way that they decide? It's just a bad way of choosing a ruler. Though, I mean, the Romans weren't weren't any better they're like i was gonna say i mean in history like there was a we're still kind of trying to figure it we're testing on democracy right now see how that goes but yeah. like we still haven't quite figured it These out it's two freaking men in their 70s is the best we have to offer like that's the best of all america maybe we should try the ember in the ashes way see how that goes i mean you you know what you're right i withdraw my previous statement y'all know that people can be president at 35 right are we aware as a country that 35 is the minimum age right that in a country of 350 million people, we can probably do better, right? Like, what? Uh, moving on. So <laughs> that, that got political. I wonder which political people I made mad. Everybody. I was going to say all. <laughs> I really try. I really try to do that. I really try to. If I'm going to talk politically, I really try to take everybody off. Um, but I don't. I think most people would agree that we could probably have done better. Like. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Ember in the Ashes would be a better way, like decide by combat or some weird. I mean, at least it would be different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would spice things up. <laughs> Who's the main character? This Laya. I mean, Laya and uh, Elias. Elias. Eli Lion Elias and. Holy Which is very God. confusing when you say it out loud. Is like on Helene? paper, their names don't look the same, but when you say Laya and Elias, it's yeah. the same. Is it Helene? Is that her name? Yeah, Helene. Helene. Okay, so Helene was my favorite character. Um, and uh, Helene gets her own POV in the yeah in the next book. I, I heard that as well. Um, so I like Helene. I like the kind of, I like the the love interest between her and Elias kind of thing. I didn't like it between, it was insta-love. It was just, my problem with YA and, you know, people Wait, like- Wait, again, oh, tell tell the good people who you think the romance was between? The, the romance between Elias and Laya. I'm saying that Helene clearly also liked Elias. Yeah, but you were all up in arms about Laya and Kieran. And I'm like, who cares about Kieran? Oh, no Keegan. Cares about Kieran. Keegan. Kieran. I don't know. Kieran's Keegan. It's not Keegan. It, I promise it's Keegan because I teach a child named Keegan. It's Keegan. That doesn't mean that's the name of the book. It's Kieran. I remember it. No. The you guy just mispronounced it. Keenan. It's Keenan. It might be Keenan. But it's, it's not Keenan. Keegan. Sorry. It's Keenan. That's It's right. Keenan. Hold on. I'm, I'm typing this in all caps, so I accidentally hit caps. But so is your student's name actually Keenan and not Keegan? <laughs> Oh, his his name it is Keenan. His name is Keegan, and I I remember thinking I'm like, did I read that name in Ember in the Ashes? No, his name's Keenan. Keenan, yeah, Lion that's Keenan. Wrong. That's a love that's a love interest too, and that's stupid. It's also stupid because it's insta love. She's like, oh, like and because like like the second before he's like threatening to kill her. It's so dumb. Um, so have you problem, met teenagers? Are you tell me how dumb your students are all the time? One hundred. Why is like sixteen? Doesn't mean I don't like it. Like that's the thing. Like 
I can't really be mad at YA for being YA. When people trash YA as a whole, like that's rude. It is. What, what we don't like about YA, what I personally don't like about YA are the tropes that tend to be really heavily used. In We're not even necessarily tropes, but like the type of life decisions that you're facing and the emotional situations that you're yeah. in as a 16 year old aren't the same as when you're 30. So yeah, so young young protagonists already don't appeal to me. But then stuff like insta love and love triangles, um, and the way these things are handled, not them specifically, but the way they tend to be handled in uh, in uh, YA novels, like I just it's just not for me. Like I just don't care. Like I don't like. So I think it's kind of refreshing that it's like when uh, was it Sleepless in Seattle where she doesn't actually meet him until the very end of the movie, which is kind of unusual for a rom com. Yeah. That Elias and Laya don't really meet really until the end of the book. That part's fine, and you know what? Like that would have even been okay. What ruined this book for me are the cartoonish villains. I didn't like the. How combat. are you going to know who the villains are if they don't like abuse a small animal or not, a, a vulnerable like, human? Kicking tropes literally has a trope called kicking the puppy, where they do something that's so evil, just so you know how evil they are. And I'm, I am usually more fine with mustache twirling villains yeah, than most people. Are. Most people are like, I don't want someone. I don't want a villain that's going to be evil just for evil's sake. Why? Like that's interesting. Like someone who literally, I, I am actually, and this comes from playing a ton of. Um, uh, video games and reading, you know, I re I've read fantasy for forever, like most people, but like, I'm kind of tired of the, here's why you should be sympathetic to the villain. No, oh, yeah. I don't care. I don't See, care. This is why I can't wait for you to read Abercrombie. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't care. I don't want to know he had a bad childhood. I don't, guess what? People have bad childhoods and turn out not to be douchebags all the time. Like, I don't care. I don't care. Just make him bad. Like, it's fine. He doesn't have to have gone, been bad because something happened to him. He can just be bad. So I'm more okay with that than most people. Most people want some really complex, like morally grave villain. No, make him be like- I mean, oh, a yeah. truly more, I mean, I feel like that's misled. I mean, people throw that around a lot, say, oh, yeah. it's morally grave. I mean, no, it's not morally grave. It's the author wanting you to still root for this character. So they're throwing you a bone for like, oh, but they're not all bad. That's not morally grave. That's cheating. Correct. Whereas like a truly morally grave villain is what you get in like an Abercrombie book where you're like, no, they're not redeemable. They're absolutely not. But like I, I do identify with what they're going through. I can't deny that, and yeah. I, I, sh I feel like I just want to hate them because they're obviously a bad person. But they're also like <laughs> thinking things that I would think. They're yeah. doing things that like they're like I don't not condone that. So, and again, I'm f I'm totally fine with with the black and white stuff. So where the the guys like you know what that town's filled with with starving children. You know what? Let's poison it. Totally fine. Like Kafka from Final Fantasy VI. Anybody played video games? You know. Kefka, there's nothing nuanced about him. He's an insane clown. He poisons an entire city because he can. That's it. Bad guy. No, nothing that made him that way. Just a bad dude. So I like that. But this was... Well, that's kind of like, then more like Adrius in Red Rising. Yes, the jackal, who, I mean, we understand that he's bad because... You know. It's again, it's more of like a Joker type character, but the ones that are villains that seem to, where it's not just like, I want to watch the world burn, where it's like, they have a villainous plan. They have a plan and a goal and the goal is to be evil. I mean, that's yes. ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> that's why, the, that's why I love the Jackal. He's, he's, he's in my top of villains because, because he's that way. Um, so, but these were so like, it's like she strapped a ham to her fist and then just like bludgeoned me to death with it. Because the Commandant does stuff that isn't even in her best interest. Like, the ja let's compare her to the Jackal. The Jackal is very evil. And again, I think this is a good comparison because everyone keeps telling me, like, oh, would you just wait? The Commandant has a reason she's like that. Okay. So does the Jackal. But the Jackal doesn't do anything that it would hurt torches his own, like, his own power. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything to hinder himself. The Commandant does, repeatedly, just so she can show how evil she is. And that's frustrating. But and then even worse is Marcus, who like I already. Hate I mean, I think Marcus is much more of a cartoonish villain than the Commandant. One, yes, one hundred percent. The Commandant just does things that that make no sense. It's insane, but in an in a I don't understand why you did that way. Marcus is just like literally snidely with Lash as a child. He first of all, I hate the murder bully trope, as you know. And this is the mur most murderous of all murders. I mean, goals. Joffrey. Joffrey, Joffrey, Joffrey isn't really a murderous bully because he's not really. It, 
he's murderous and he is a bully. <laughs> yes, but he's a bully once he's king. So he has the power to do stuff. He's not like. Well, he's, he's not... a bully before then. He just doesn't have the power to do as much as he'd like to. I barely, judged, look, like, uh... I barely remember anything happening before Joffrey's king. What is he not king in Game of Thrones? Is it just the first book? Yeah. But so, I mean, it's thanks to him that that like uh, that peasant boy that Arya is playing with gets yeah. killed because yeah. Joffrey's like, kill him. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, so I don't like him either, but he's just not. I don't know. I remember Joffrey way more as king. And then and at that point, you're transcendent bully. You have to play with the other children to be a bully. Um, but Marcus and, and I, I mean this without exaggeration, without like I am. I am prone to hyperbole. I will admit this. is you? I know. Right. Um Every time Marcus is on the page, if he is talking to a guy, he is threatening to murder them. If he is talking to a woman, he is threatening to rape them. And this is this is this is this is one hundred percent accurate. There's what no else exaggeration. What do you say there. to men and women? It's what? What else do you say to men and women? I mean, obviously, every conversation. I'm not going to say that on camera on where that a video that's online. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Um, but I mean, yeah, I know. Um, my students watch these sometimes. It's horrible. I almost spilled coffee everywhere. So Marcus is just dumb. Um, this is spoilers for Ember in the Ashes, the stuff that happens at the end, just letting you know. And so now Marcus is going to be emperor, and that might be slightly more interesting because at least then he can shut up. Like, he can stop following around. But I'm afraid it's going to be a bunch of like, hey, now I can rape you, and now I can kill you. Whatever. I mean, um, there were like, you know Roman history. There were like psychotic bullies to be bullies who were in power. If Caligula had been like that as a child, he never would have been emperor. They never would have put that kid as emperor. The problem is, is most of these murderous, insane people weren't like this as children or before they became emperor. Caligula was, everyone loved Caligula as a kid. Like he was a, you know, handsome kid. Everybody liked him. And then Nero was perfectly reasonable the first couple um, couple years of his reign until his insane mom, like, you know, oh, like, yes. Blame the mother. Agrippina the Younger is an insane person. She is a crazy woman. Like, she is crazy. Um, you know, and then Nero had her killed. So Nero, again, Nero, Seneca did everything he could. His, Nero's tutor to try to, like, make sure this guy stayed on the straight and narrow. And Nero did some pretty good things to start with. And then gone. And he's like, Seneca, exiled. Um, and then he had no, once that was gone, it was just his mom. And he had no, like... Uh, broke the seal on the crazy and he just yeah and there was no one there was no one to hold it back there was no like no know, check stop. on his yeah no craziness. check thank you so uh but yeah so i liked it i mean i liked elias i like that he's trying to leave the stupid empire um and i like that helene and him are at odds that is really the most interesting thing to me um to keep going is to see what helene's doing well helene's in it a whole bunch yeah there you go that's my thought on that that took 22 minutes I mean, in fairness, you didn't spend the whole 22 minutes talking about Ember in the Ashes. It took us 10 minutes to even get to the part where we were talking about books. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ember in the Ashes. So then we talked about the wolf for quite a long time, but you can tell yeah. me again why it's not perfect. I'll take it. I like the wolf. I'm way more excited to read the spider, though, because I love the character that is the spider. Um, like, I just like, like the whole time. Also, I mean, that, even though I've read the wolf five times, the spider is better. Like the whole time I'm reading it, I'm just like. Do not make a deal with that guy. Do not make it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the cost. Like, it's not going to be Everyone worth around it. him tells him that, too. I know. And it's just like, it is not going to be worth it. But I love, but he has to. Like, I mean, at least he feels like he has to. And his kind of attitude is also like, well, what else was I supposed to do? I'll deal with that tomorrow. I had Correct. to make this deal to save us today. I'll figure that out Yes. Tomorrow. And you know what? Like, I can't fault him for that. So that's one of the things I do really like about the wolf is like the, 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 the political and military decisions that have to be made uh, by... What's the man's Roper. name? What? Roper. Roper. And then the other one is what? Belich Belichick? Belichick. Bellamus. Bellamus. Thank you. It's not Bill Belichick. Um, yes. So I love, I, I I really do like the general versus general, like mind versus mind. And I like the fact that. The military Roper, chess game. Yeah. And that Roper had a an enemy, you know, within his own camp that he was also trying to outmaneuver while also trying to outmaneuver Bellamus. Um, and that's who? Like Uric, Uzric or whatever. Um, What's the guy's name? Yuvorin. Beauregard. There you go. Yuvorin. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Beauregard? Um, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, hold on. I also love Katura and her father. Yes. Yes. Katura's that. father is one of my favorite characters. Yes, because he's like, you know, he, I mean, he supports Roper, but he's like, don't get my daughter hurt. 
Like, don't. Just well, don't even the it. first time that Roper goes to see him, he's like, so why should I support you? And he just exactly. like laughs at him immediately. <laughs> and he's like, here, Mary, Mary, was it? Was he saying Mary, this one, like no one likes her. Like she's mean to everybody or something. She's like, she'll be mean to you. Yeah. I like Katora. She's nice. Um, or not. Katora's not, nice. not very nice. She's not nice. But she's, I mean, she, you know, she's smart. Tells, she tells Roper to shut up. Um, What's also, I mean, it's very much like a partnership and it takes a while for Roper to really appreciate that. But she's like, Hey, you do the battle thing and I figure out the home front because uh, we both got skin in this game. Let me do my part. Yeah. Yeah. So I did like that. Um, uh, and I like the, I like the fact that it's, you know, the freaking, I like that they have like bone plates in their, yeah. in their chest. Well, they're uh, Neanderthals. Yeah. 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 Neanderthals. And, and then the, you know, the Brits span, expanding upwards. Um, and I, I liked it even more. I appreciate it even more after just finishing the Warlord Chronicles. Um of you know the Saxons and stuff taking over Britain and stuff like that, uh, you know the Britons trying to fight off the Saxons and just the the, the whole native peoples of those disparate tribes coming in and fighting and um, so that added that added to my context of the wolf. Um, some things I didn't I, I, I did it's out. It feels very much like a first novel. Like I, I think uh, I need Carew to trust me as a reader that I remember the trick that the huge like you know, yeah. ruse that was pulled. He doesn't need to remind me in the next scene. Like, no, that was pretty I mean, cool. I also want to be like, maybe he does trust you to remember. Maybe he just wants you, wants to be like, hey, remember when I did that clever thing? Yeah, you know who did that? Cicero. And <laughs> everyone, everyone found him a twerp. Um, but uh, but there's a lot of that. And that's, that's the most annoying thing about it is he constantly repeats things that I already know, which is weird. I don't really know why. Um, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I'm just like, please stop. And it got better toward the end, as at the beginning, especially. And the fact that like there were a bunch of like elite groups of these people, the Northerners. What are they called? What are the Northerners called? You mean the Neanderthals? Yeah, Anakim. The Anakim. Thank you. Um, the ones, the other ones are the Southerners. Um, but like, there's always these. There's all these are all elite groups of Anakim, and it's always like these were the best ones, and. These and it's like, well, they can't all be the best. Which one was the actual best? And it took me forever to figure out which one was the actual best. Um, because they were all elite. I'm like, but in yeah. fairness, like if you have different warrior sects, they're all gonna want to be known for being the best at something. That's true, but I mean, you gotta help me differentiate between them, Karu. So I did like the wolf. I'm 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 I'm, I'm much more excited to read the spider. The spider um, is it's really really because cool. where it left off. Oh man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the chaos that, that the spider's gonna wreak. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah. So I did like I did like that one. Did you ever, after the Shelf Space Live, did you ever go and read his blog about like the origin of a species? I think I read some of it. I don't remember. Where he kind of goes into sure. all of the the ways and the ideas that went into forming what the Anakim ended up becoming. It was in July. I don't remember. See, and I said that I've forgotten the books I read in July, and you're like, "Well, you need to read smarter." <laughs> Why did say that? I just say that. But you read too much, and so. Oh. But you can't remember even though you've only read two things. <laughs> yes. What I'm saying is that, like, if I can't remember and I've only read a couple things, then you certainly can't remember having read 20 things. So now I'm getting a pass for forgetting? I'm no, I'm saying that you should read better and so that you remember things instead of pretending to read, which is what you do. You're like, I read 20 things, but you don't remember anything about them. So it's as if you didn't read them. <laughs> I read your books in July. <laughs> yeah. But you haven't told me anything about them. Right, I'm... because we were going to do this, and then we're still not going to do that part of it. <laughs> I hate my life. What is happening? <laughs> Why did we talk for so long before we started this video? It's not my fault. We haven't talked forever. I haven't talked forever. <laughs> Dang it. All right. But What's you that? should read the blog if you're interested at all, because like I feel like a lot of the appreciation that I have for the wolf, I think it's a good story and I like the characters and everything, but like a lot of me being like, but it's amazing is because of like his like developing the Neanderthal into like its own cultural. I do agree with Klaus a little bit that the queen of the Southerners is a little bit like great value brand Cersei. <laughs> Like it is like the Sam's choice version of the Dr. Thunder version. Of well, she's of in it Cersei. a bit more okay. like distinctively in the spider. Okay. What's next? What'd you read next? The Diabolic. The Diabolic. Man, Liana, 
I was shocked by how much I liked the first. I was album. shocked by how much I thought there was a good chance you'd like it, but like I, I, I didn't just like. I loved the first half of that book. I was like, holy crap! I was in my Discord, like. I well, even with your dissatisfaction at the end, like I would think you'd still agree that it does stand out from the pack. Even I agree. As no, I, agree. I definitely agree with that. Um, like in in the, in my Discord, I was like, guys, I'm reading the Diabolic, and I love this book. And then it hit the halfway point, and it's at that. This is okay, guys. So, well, I'll talk about the spoiler in a second. And then, um, what I liked, like it was just, it was just, it was just, it was different. Like I like the world building. I like that it is, you know, that the um. It's it's in our world, but in the far future, and uh, like a, the the sun is like had like a huge solar flare and like you know killed all life on Earth or whatever, and then it also all the knowledge was like stored on hard drives and so, floppy disks. Yeah, and so the solar flare wiped it all out, and so there's only like only the senatorial class has access to the knowledge of technology, but they are literally letting it die out. They're you know the Solarists or whatever. They're in the cult of the sun. Um, they're controlling the populace by not giving anybody the tech to, you know. Well, it's kind of a, almost Dune-like like that. in that sense where they don't trust. It's almost tech. what like? Like Dune. I've never read Dune. Well, like that's, I mean, that's why they have Mentats and people using the spice because like they have basically human computers instead because they don't trust computer computers. Keep talking about that. While <laughs> my don't tell me what to do. <laughs> okay, well then you can sit there with dead air. Okay, well, everyone is here for my expert opinion on Dune because everyone knows that I'm a big fan of Dune and everything I say about Dune is true. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I think Dune was among the first to, or not, uh, maybe not among the first, but it kind of set that trend of having a far future, yes, like interesting new tech and we could travel in space, yes, but also weirdly, we don't do tech, we don't do computers, we don't have AIs because we don't trust that. So. Yeah, and the Diabolics, you know, being these, like, kind of android cyborg constructs that are... I mean, they're like, just genetically altered humans. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of like golds, except golds that are enslaved. I thought they had, like, parts of them were, like, machine. No. Are you sure? Yeah. They're just engineered to be insanely strong and insanely... Have machines. Mm -mm. I, I will go get it and look in the first chapter. I think it says something about that. Regardless. Um, <laughs> regardless. Um, they imprint. You know, they imprint. They're supposed to protect one person. And that was super cool. And then, you know, I like that they're banned because senators are literally just using them to kill uh, their political rivals. Uh, what Which they is, would do if they had yeah, diabolics. Yeah, of course they would. What is completely far-fetched is the fact that when the emperor outlaws diabolics, that, like... Uh, Dona's family is the only one that pretends like they got rid of the diabolic but didn't. When when you don't have contact, like when you're far. But I mean, how do you know that they're the only ones that pretended that? You don't. They just pretend, and there was nothing. They're the ones that you're around that. seeing, and everybody Correct. who was like in the capital, like it would be very hard to hide them. Like yeah. they would get. That's true, but the problem is, is like the emperor seems to think, like it does. It doesn't make sense that the emperor isn't more suspicious. Because it, because there's literally no reason for them to follow your directive when you're that far away. Like, there's no way you can check. But up there's also no problem. reason for him to really think that it's possible to have disguised your diabolic. That that that's true. I'm not. Ta I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about. Um. But so like, he this. doesn't maybe necessarily like it. It doesn't really affect him if they did get rid of their diabolics out there because the problem with diabolics was here they're where they were using them to assassinate yeah, people. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um. It's just. It's just a weird, like. Order. It's like, how are you going to enforce that, bro? Um, and then also, I really liked. Oh, why can't it? Tyrus? Tyrus. I'm Tyrus. bad with remembering names. I can remember the plots of books, but names, I'm bad at remembering them afterwards. Uh, Tyrus. I really liked Tyrus early on. The I Claudius character. Who I thought was Caligula. So if you guys. If you guys don't know the story of Claudius and Caligula, then you're fine. If you do, well, it's too late. We already spoiled it. Um, but yeah, I thought he was Caligula. He's 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 definitely Claudius. Um, and so I thought he was more interesting in that first half. And then it became, he was still interesting. He was still interesting enough to save it, which was good. 
but not as interesting as I wanted him to be. Not as interesting as he was before. Like I, spoilers. We're gonna talk spoilers about the dialogue now. Um, there you go. I liked <laughs> I liked Tyrus when he was crazy um, better than when I liked him than than afterwards. Um, well, this is like a similar problem, uh, not exactly the same, but kind of the problem you have when you take a character like Jack Sparrow, or you take a character. I know you haven't read the Grisha books, but like Nikolai Lansoff, who's sort of this like wild card who shows up is enigmatic. And you don't, kind of don't know which side they're on. You kind of don't know what their deal is. And that's what makes them fun and interesting. And then if you make the story about them and you see yeah. inside their own heads and they have to carry the story, they can't be that anymore because mm -hmm. they have to carry the plot. You have to know what they're doing. And it, what made them fun was that you didn't know. Correct. Correct. And so when he becomes, when, when the plot changed. So the big thing that shocked me was freaking Emperor blows up blows up Dona and her family, which I did, was not expecting. I was like, holy crap. Holy crap. There like, goes oh. Nemesis's raison d'etre. I know. Like I'm like, she went there. I'm like, that is freaking awesome. And I was so impressed because remember, the other why I read was freaking Ember in the Ashes, which did everything I predicted. I did not predict that. I thought it was, I thought it was cool when she was there, you know, pretending to be Dona. I you it was also cool. didn't predict that Tyrus was Claudius. I did not. <laughs> Um, so, you know, she's there pretending to be doing, I thought it was awesome. And then, and then it becomes, then the freaking. it's like, oh, can I love as a human, as a ro am I a robot or a monster or a human? Can I love? Does he like me? I think he likes me. Oh, I have, can I have feelings? At, and I'm just like, oh, it's a, an important part of the human experience. So it would be entirely new. For Nemesis to have love independent of being brainwashed into it. Can you trust your own emotions? Can you trust love? The only love you've ever known was what it was programmed in you to feel. It's not, it's not the same kind of love, though apparently Dona had the same kind of love. Um, but that was weird. Dona showing back up. She died? She didn't she sacrifice herself for Nemesis? Dona? Uh yeah. Oh, she got poisoned by the mm -hmm. by the by the the queen mother, the mm -hmm. Tyrus's grandma. Um, oh, that sucked. Um, yeah, I mean, I get the part where, like, you know, learning to feel that, it, like, but the love part's dumb. Like, like I understand it. I just don't care. Like, that's the problem. I, I, like, I, I mean, if you're going to have a story where, because, like, a lot of it is to do with, like, nemesis dealing or grappling with what it is to be human before yeah, romance becomes probably. part of it. So, like, romance is a necessary thing yeah, I to also care. explore I with care. that. I would rather her, I would rather her deal with any any other human response other than romance. Because the problem is, it's just, like, it just, just gets in the way. Like it messes up. But also, life. again, so it was originally a standalone, and I love that the end is ambiguous. I agree. No, it I doesn't, agree. It's not a neat, when they lived happily ever after. It's very like, but did you have I, a I 100% think that Tyrus is lying. I think Tyrus is lying. Um, I think Tyrus definitely knew what was going to go on, what was going on. And that's, that's what I think. But again, like um, as a, a, in terms of like, what do you predict? Like it's a bold choice for a I standalone agree. YA book to leave it in a sort of like. <laughs> I agree. Part of my problem though, is because like it didn't feel super YA earlier on, but then it started doing, it just started doing the thing where like stuff is resolved really fast like, well, because really it was going to mean that too. Like, if I think if she had known that she would make this a series, then things, the problems would have carried over into other books. But as a standalone, so all of that has to get wrapped up. And YA books can't be a thousand pages long. So, like, yeah. you got to wrap it up. They can. Do you know how long this book right here is? Yeah, but every, okay, unless you're Sarah J. Mass. Uh, okay. <laughs> and the um, thing is, with Sarah J. Mass, she actually doesn't have a thousand pages worth of plot. So, yeah. like, as, as Jake like, Kincaid could actually tell you a plot for a thousand pages. The thing that I like the least is literally at the end where freaking Nemesis is standing there monologuing and no one is killing her. Like they're just letting her say all of this stuff, all of this vile crap that is dangerous should it get out. And there are literally people standing there who could kill her. And they're just like, you know what? We'll wait till you're done. And I'm just like, I mean, come on. Come on, come on. Like that's 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 whatever. But again, 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 it is not, you know, it is not supposed to be grim dark like fantasy. I mean, for a YA book, it's kind for of for a YA dark. book, it was exceptional. It was excellent for a YA book. But I also quite not. grim dark for a YA book, because it went to dark places. It did. I just didn't like I don't know. I just didn't like the romance part, and I thought there was too much of it. And I understand why it was there. I just didn't love it. So I gave the second I'm half just, three stars. I'm so yeah. curious what you will think of the second one. Well, I gave it four stars overall. Because again, like, guys, 
if you are not someone who just if you just don't hate YA, like if you hate YA, you won't like this book. Uh, but on if principle, you, without ever even reading a correct. single word of it. But if you don't hate YA, then um, you should um, you should read this because the first the first section is is exceptional, and the second half isn't terrible. No, no, I just didn't like it as much. Blackwing is next. Blackwing. Five I think four. it's both. I mean, okay, the wolf I am unreasonably fond of, but I think both of our favorites of the four is Blackwing's well. fantastic. It was so good. It was, I, I had no idea what to expect. Um, I'd heard people say it was good, but I hadn't heard anybody talking about it really, other than it was good. Because you don't watch my videos. When did you talk about Blackwing? Not recently. Not since we've been no, friends. Not recently. Yeah. That's true. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved it. I love Blackwing. Like hands down, my favorite one. Of, I would have uh, been shocked if you'd hated it. I didn't know if you would love it, but I thought. No, I definitely loved it. Um, uh, Gal Harrow, like, what a, just what a cool name. Um, All the names in it I really like. Yeah, they And are. I like that they have more of that sort of Eastern, it's not that Western European so much uh, sound to like the names, you know? Oh, yeah. But I like, I mean, I just like the aesthetic. Like, it's like, it's like Victorian, it's like Victorian England after the, after the nukes go off. Like, it's Victorian England in the far future. Because, you know, like, I just love the aesthetic. It's like steampunk. But it's like post-apocalyptic steampunk because they got the light. The I mean, light. It's just very industrial, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The industrial feel. Thank you. They got the um, you know, they got the bulbs. Like I love the 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 foss. Yes, I don't know what they're called. The foss, the 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 casters, the ones that they use. They use the light the spinners. Magic. Sure. Um. Yeah. They use the 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 light magic. Um. And then you know they burn up the batteries. I just I, it to me when it bursts, it's like uh, when they use it up. It's like one of those old timey. Uh, flash bulbs that the mm -hmm. like hey smile for the dicky bird thing yeah. um and i just love that whole industrial feel and the fact that there's this super weapon that no one knows if it works Doomsday weapon yeah and it just keeps it keeps back the the drowned ones or whatever they are the, the kings, deep kings the deep kings thank you thank you for knowing the names of things um i've read blackwing like three times oh, okay. <laughs> and you know like the fact that there's like you know what is there there are four there's four wizards left they're the nameless ones? Nameless ones. They're like four gods left. Um, except they have names. Like well, I mean, they've Crowfoot. given them sort of nicknames, but they don't oh, have yeah. their own names. Yeah. So like Crowfoot, and um, then you know, you have the the deep kings who and you have the one that blew up everything. What's the one that built the weapon? What's his name? Null. Null, thank you. Um I just love it. It feels like so many things that I like, like the. Well, it's also it got it has that sort of like government conspiracy Jean Le Carre kind of plot. Yeah, because like Gal Harrow isn't just like on a quest; like he's investigating something being not right with the government, and it's someone like is not doing novel. what they're supposed to be doing. It's a detective novel where he's like, you know, trying to he finds the dame, and uh, you know she can kick the crap out of <laughs> with the uh, freaking light and stuff, and then he's trying to figure out what's going on with her and. Keep track of her while also and investigating think, the government. Uh, Ed McDonald does a good job of sprinkling in Gal Harrow's backstory. I I agree. I said that in my review. I said that in my review. I agree. He does a he does a great job of sprinkling it in because from the beginning, from the beginning, you know that he knows her, um, but you don't really know from where or why. Um, and also that he's like clearly more than the job he has right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I I like her brother. I I liked her brother too. He was a good character, and I loved Crowfoot. How Crowfoot's like, "What are you bothering me for? Like, like what what do you want? What do you want? Okay, fine, shut up, leave me alone." I just I love the imagery of the the crow tattoo, like bloodily exploding. Like, yes, it's magic, and yes, it'll heal up, but it will not be pleasant. It will feel exactly like an actual bird exploded out of yeah. your arm. <laughs> and then the creepy little imp things that. Eat you alive because they're oh, biting. The killing, yeah. It's just and the, the darlings are so creepy. Oh, the darlings, yeah. Like, the, did you listen to it on audio at all? I did not. I because like the voice he does for the darlings. Oh, oh really? Because it's I not just, like you know that childish voice that yeah. suddenly so mild, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I could not listen to it on audio. There's too many words that I needed to see. I I would listen to it if I reread it. I would listen to it on audio. I really like, like the narrator. He's really good. He did. He did Shadows of the Gods. Um, John Gwynn's Shadow of the Shadow of the Gods book, and I. Really I think I it. saw that, and it was like almost made me want to pick it up just because I like that narrator a lot. But then I was, was like, good. Nah, he was good. <laughs> um, and uh, so yeah, I really liked it. Like I love the characters. I love what happens. I love the, like the mystery. Like I, I, I really like books that have a mystery yeah. at their at their heart because I never figure it out. Um, which is good because 
I'm always surprised. Always. Well, also, I mean, like the, it kind of makes it, it was believable enough that it was like actual like math and equations and them trying to figure out like the machine and how it works and like her brother being like kind of a math genius and like trying to figure all of that out. And like, I know it was like BS because none of this is like real physics yeah. or real math, but it, like it sounded kind of legit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it when a book has its own physical physics principle that they name after a character from the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was just really good. I loved the world. Like the world was excellent. Um, I mean, it's not one that you're like like Harry Potter. Like, oh, I wish I could be in the world. No. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, and it has a very Borderlands, uh, gunslinger, um, and definitely H.P. Lovecraft vibes with some of that creepy crap out in the misery. The Deep Kings, yeah. yeah, like it was, oh, it was. It was good. I'm excited. I hope to read. It, I mean, uh, I think I told Raven you. Cry. So I've read Blackwing three times. I've read Raven Cry twice, and I've read Crowfall once. Mm -hmm. And I definitely need to reread Crowfall because I am not confident that I know what happened. I heard because <laughs> it other gets so also. insanely Lovecraftian by the end. I heard from other people also that they they liked crowfall the least most people i don't even know if i like it the least because i don't know that i know what happened <laughs> well again if i can actually freaking read something i'm hoping that's priority uh series to finish because i i enjoyed that. raven cry is just as good if not better than blackwing that's awesome it was so good so and yeah. it does um because like a lot of i guess with series that um because this is one of those where it's not Okay, I, I've started the sentence like three times. <laughs> you know, like there's trilogies that are like the first law trilogy where I know you haven't read it, but it's more sort of like one story in three parts or like Lord of the Rings. It's like one story in three parts versus other series where they each kind of more episode, like there's an overarching story, but they have more episodically their own arc individually. And so Blackwing very much like has its own arc. Yeah. And so like, yes, there's threads from, you know, there's the overarching kind of question of the situation they're in without spoilers. There's time but jump between them right isn't there there is a time jump but so i think that it did a, a good job of not just being like well this next installment will be the same thing but with a new mystery like it yeah. is very much it's a different book while still doing you know the good character work and yeah it would be really hard same. to do that that way with what happened in this book Mm -hmm. um, it would be really hard to be like so I mean oh, yeah I think Brave and Cry does a good job of like now expanding and like okay so what does make sense for what these characters have done and what's happened and where we've gone with this and what new information we have and that's cool and, and like I'm, ex I'm excited to read it because you, a lot of times when that happens I'm just like why are you doing this weird thing just go back and do the thing that that I liked in the first book like that for for example right now in uh, we're reading Blood of the Mantis um, book three of Shadows of the Apt and several people uh, did not enjoy this as much as they did, like, the first two books. Oh, and me and the, the Voxer chat I have with it were talking about it. It feels very different. And it's like, is that a bad thing? Like, but it's just like, this is so different than the last book, which was literally like, you know, 400 pages of siege warfare and stuff. It's so very different than what was happening in the last book that it just feels, it just feels like a completely different kind of thing. And, you know, some people are just like, just, I just want more of that. I just, can I can I have more of the siege warfare or whatever? That's usually me. Um, but I'm I'm enjoying this. So so I'm making the comparison. If uh, Raven Cry does what this particular book has done, where it is different, but um, you know, it's just. I mean, it's the same in that you have the you know, a lot of the same characters yeah. again, the ones that are alive, and then it's the world. The world said the status quo change that happens by Blackwing, like this is the world and that's still the world. And then like it is the same insofar as like there is a new question to be answered, you know, a new mystery, but it doesn't feel like mystery of the week. Yeah. Like it feels very earned. Like it's also mm -hmm. many years on and there's like he's in a very different position than he was in Blackwing and he's got a different support network than he had in Blackwing. And so Marshall, you see the Marshall in Raven Cry? Um, he's Marshall. No. I mean, he's a, I forget the title of his position. Does the Marshal die at the end of Blackwing? Yes. Who kills him? Does he die in the siege? I think. Or does, or does his, the, the, the other woman kill Why can't I remember these details? <laughs> the one guy with the thing and then the that happened. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have my notebook somewhere. It's not close. I don't remember the answer to that, but I think so. Black, I feel like I remember that happening. Blackwing, Marshall. I'm pretty sure he died. Spoilers. Not, not, <laughs> not Marsha. Hold on. Blackwing, 
and Marsha Brady um, also dies in Blackwing. Who is a flipping Marshall? They never know anything. This stupid, like, I hate that every freaking thing. Um, like, if you need to know anything about anything that happened in any Brandon Sanderson book, find a hundred freaking clicks. Books no one's read. I can't freaking find any. Oh, hold on. Blackwing Ed McDonald characters. That'll help. Characters. Boom. Who is it? First of all, would you like to know who Grimdark Magazine casts in their dream cast for Black Do I? They have, I don't know, do you? I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, so they have, who does he have as Gal Harrow? He has, oh, there's three picks. There are three choices. Is one of them Carl Urban? No, one of them is Nicolaj Coaster Waldo. Oh, I do not picture him as Gal Harrow. Okay, here are the other two choices. Do you? Mike, I mean, no, I picture... Because I feel like Gal Harrow is like a handsomer version of the Hound in vibe. I picture him, I picture most people looking like Hugh Laurie. Um, <laughs> what? That's so random. But you know, he's kind of like big and gruff like the Hound, like Sandor oh, he Clegane. he is big. He is big. He's a detective, so I always picture them just like... And, like he's like haggard from being in the misery. He looks like the Hound. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Not like Pretty Prince Landis. Okay, how about Mike Coulter? That's Luke Cage. Do you know Luke Cage? Uh, Star of Luke Cage. I saw like the He's thumbnail on Netflix. Dude. But he, So right. he plays Luke Cage? Yeah. How about Joel He's... Kinnaman from Altered Carbon? Have you no, seen okay, He's like too wiry. Like I really like Joel Kinnaman as an actor. He could be someone in it, but not Gal Harrow. He looks like a buff dude in this picture. I mean, he's fit, but he's, like, really lanky. He looks buff in these pictures. That's fine. Okay. I picture someone um, like Carl um, Urban or the guy who plays Sandra as a Beth, as a Beth, they have... They, it looks like they agree. All three agree that they want... Apparently, they really just like Altered Carbon. Um, Martha <laughs> Higarita from Altered Carbon. Was she like the detective that I have never movie? seen Altered Carbon? I don't watch Netflix original shows except Money Heist. Principal? Um, no, I just I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, and so if, unless it's not super interesting, I don't look up look up Martha Higarita. Don't tell me what to do. Please, I do not. I cannot show you her through the TV. Through the TV. I mean, you could like look it up on your phone and just like show me your phone. What's the name? Whatever. What's the name? I got you. Martha Higara, Higarada. Martha Hig. Yeah, she is the detective. Wait, no, was she? This lady. This is who she has. This is who they have as Elizabeth. Do you picture that as Elizabeth? No, I picture I picture I picture Rachel Vice. <laughs> I can you know see that. I just picture someone very like fragile looking. Paul Harrow Elizabeth. is Brendan Fraser, and Elizabeth is Rachel Vice. Oh no. Just like the mummy. Oh, no. Oh, yes. No. Yes. <laughs> That's what I pictured. Um, yeah, I mean, you know Rachel Weiss plays um, Rachel in My Cousin I Rachel. I do. That's all I can picture every time she's like... But I, I feel like Elizabeth like is just very, like, kind of delicate and fragile. Like, not that her character is, but in how, like, she looks and, and Ke like, bodily. Kira Knightley, then. That's who needs to play it. She's too tall. I want someone like very small, petite, all in all ways delicate. Well, how do you feel about Nen being played by Gal Gadot? Gal Gadot, I guess. You're gonna chop her nose off? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I just, yeah, she's too pretty to play. Nen. Who's, who's Tenota? Is he the navigator? Yeah, he's. Oh uh, yeah, Tenota. He's that. Uh, Dang, they have Ben Ben Kingsley as Tenota. Oh, I, I, yeah, I like that. I can get behind that one. I can get behind that one. Who do they have as the psycho wizard dude? I forget his name. Who's Dantry? Oh, Dantry's the brother. Dantry's yeah. the brother. Dantry. Man, freaking Zach Efron. <laughs> Wait, so they want... Isn't Zach... I mean, I guess I, I keep thinking right. of him as Zach only Efron, 18 years old. Zach Efron or good. Zachary Quinto. Those are the two choices. Zachary Quinto. Because he's like a mathematician, blah, blah, blah. Hirano. Oh, Hirano's. Okay. Hirano's the prince, the the 
which was always so weird that they, they call they call her a prince even though you know she's a girl like she's a woman. But it's just the the title yeah, of the, it's the title. It's just always weird when it's like. Well, I also like that the 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 being a prince is more akin to how like in Russian literature, like being a prince doesn't mean you're like a monarch. It means like yeah. you're noble. Yeah. So they have two choices: Helen Mirren or Maggie Smith. Helen yes. Mirren. I think I think Mag Maggie Smith is she is too McGonagall and too Lady Violet for that role, and just too old. Yeah, he but Helen Mirren, the picture they have right here, Helen Mirren. Yeah, Helen Mirren. She would kill it. Because well, have you ever really seen good. the of The Tempest where Helen Mirren plays Prospero? That's literally, that, that's got to be this picture. Okay. She's holding a staff. She's holding a staff. I'm like, this picture yeah. looks like I would picture Prince uh, Hirano. Yeah. That was fun. Um, Wait, but who do they have as the psycho wizard? As who? I forgot his name. But that like evil magic doer that Gal Harrow nope. makes a deal with. Uh, the one they're tracking, the one he's tracking, like the whole book. <laughs> I mean, the one who's been deep, deep kinged. Yeah, the one that he like is like save Nen. I don't care what it costs. I make a deal with you. Oh, the freaking the 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 surgeon guy. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. And with all of his like name. puppet children. What was his that, name? That guy is terrifying. I don't. So know. So terrifying. It's. It's hard to find anything on Blackwing. Why is this series not more popular? Because we haven't talked about it enough. So we, we remedy hey, that we need, to buddy read, we need to buddy read McDonald's, the first book in his new series at some time next year. Yes, between now and then, I want to reread Raven Cry and Crowfall. So. I will let you know when I get to them because I will, I will reread them. I mean, I will read them because I very much want to read them. Um, and we can yeah. chat about it maybe like three months after you read it. Shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Daughter of Red Winter comes out next june that is going to be his uh his next book it already has a 7.5 out of 10 out of, uh, rating are there arcs no this comes out in june but people have already rated it on no they even haven't yes. so how's it 7.5 out of 10 it's dumb anyway well, i know he was talking for a while about i don't know if that ever got funded but to publish a bestiary for the black wing universe <clears throat> he should definitely special edition that from like sub press or something i think it was like him gauging interest to see if there would be enough interest to like make it monetarily worth it and i didn't hear about it after so that makes that me sad because i would definitely do that it was excellent like it was it was just really good so i am glad uh, i i mean i had black wing on my list it was definitely on my list um also raven cry to this day has like the a scene that i don't want to like oversell it but for me it is like the one of the most chilling and yes. like haunts me and every time I think about it. Cause I, it's not one of those where like, if I'm not thinking about it, you know, if I just like think about it existing, I'm like, Oh yeah, that scene. But if I remember exactly what happens in that scene and why it bothered me, I get disturbed all over again. That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, we're in an hour. So we'll wrap this up. We're at 57 that. minutes, sir. It's going to take two arbiter minutes. of truth. <laughs> two, 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 two minutes to wrap it up. Anyway, Blackwing, I was definitely going to read it. And it was it was definitely my favorite of the bunch. So, um, again, I'm going to continue all these series. Um, I just, you know, I'm going to prioritize Blackwing out of the four. And so. then The Spider. And then Net, uh, Diabolic. You know I'm and not going to lie. Emperor. I may read Empress before I read Spider. Oh, um, yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, this was fun. We you should just have to again. read The Spider before The Cuckoo comes out. Yeah, I will. We should do this again, but with one book. Not maybe two? Maybe. If it's a month, I don't have a ton of commitment. I'm just thinking of like high stakes quizzes that I used to have. It was one question, pass, fail. Yeah, or two. Funny. All right. I could probably do two. Um, we could do, it would need to be, a, we would need to be over two months. So for two months, you give me one book. Seriously. Like sometimes I, I can't. I, the deal is the deal. We'll, we'll I get, agree we'll, to this. We'll, okay, cool. Because it, it was fun. Like it, it really was cool reading stuff that I would not. You say that about. now, but you won't say that after we do the other chat where Would we talk me? about the books that you picked for me. Then you're like, "Just kidding. This is not fun. We should never do this again." I mean, that look, you and Klaus, whether you admit to it or not, because that's what truth is like in 2021. So whether you admit to it or not, you and Klaus like you dislike things more on purpose than you normally would in the comfort of your home without a platform because you want 
to rile Absolutely somebody up. not. It is. It, whether you admit to it or not, in your heart, it's just like the fact that no one actually likes the game Monopoly. Even people oh, say they do. Oh, I don't like do. the game Monopoly. Who I plays know, Monopoly? Many people say they do. They don't. In their heart of hearts, they know that it's trash. Just like in your heart of hearts, you and Klaus know that you are purposely mean because you feel like you have to be some kind of like Thanos force balancing out all the people who love everything. That sounds more like you. I think you're projecting. What do you mean? I like everything. Except almost. for when you don't. That's true. But I like most of the things I read. It's amazing how frequently you appear to be ranting, given how frequently you like books. Like, what are you ranting about? You like what you're reading. Well, because I, I have a... Because, because, and I think we can learn from this as a nation, you can both love something and be critical of it. So yeah, I very, I very much rant. I rant about many things. I rant about freaking how how Xenophon and the Greeks ended up in the middle of Persia. What a stupid idea! Then they have to fight their way out in the Armenian winter. Yeah, I think that's what they've been chatting about on the old Twitter lately. It's, that's been the hot topic. No, it hasn't. Okay. <laughs> Let me just realize, like, hey, really? I'm like, I'm missing a discussion about Xenophon and the Ten Thousand. Where? <laughs> If there was a discussion Twitter, about like, it, what? you would have started it. I did I did I did talk about that very thing on Twitter like two days ago. That's why I was like, and have no you been one talking? Responded. <laughs> like two people responded. Okay. Two people responded. Anyway, Leanna, this, has been, this, this was fun. Next time I'm definitely gonna have you read Folding Knife. Um and if you, spoilers. If, yeah, yeah, I mean I'm gonna What if I read it between now and whenever this I'll give you a different future Parker, event happens? I'll give you a different Parker. I need um, you will... here now to commit to specific months in which this will take place. I don't know. But take that to the bank. <laughs> That's what I got for you. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, I'll figure it out. I gotta. I have to get through my backlog, which I am currently on. Is part of your backlog the Spider and the Empress and Raven Cry and Crowfall and no. Ember in the Ashes two, three, and four? No, that's on my new. Ba- that's on my. That's something. No, no. Backlist and First Law all ten. No. It's not. It's not on my backlog. My backlog. We're doing a read along for First Law next year. You should. You've uh, you read it this year, Leanna. There's no reason. This is to do how a this is how Bethany convinced me to join her podcast. <laughs> she lured me in with the carrot of Abercrombie. We're like we can do a First Law read along, and I was like, okay. And, and then have you talk about it like you've read it a hundred times. Like what? Not a hundred. Not yet. What do I? What could I possibly say that you already haven't said about it? You can tell me that you hate it. That's something I've never said. Yeah, well, then I'd have to hate it. I'm sure you would have a new, fresh take on. Leah, we were having a pleasant wrap up, and you're riling me up. We were half. We were wrapping it up pleasantly, and now you're making me angry. How are we making you angry by suggesting that you participate in a? Fun project where you could like a book that I like I can't and then read. we could what agree about month, it. Leanna? Are you having a case of the vapors? <laughs> <laughs> you lie down. Kaz, bring my smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. She's, she's in an ill humor. So I feel such tinglings all up and down my spine. It's just because you've read Daphne de Maurier. That's the stuff that happens in those books. I think my womb is wandering. Oh my gosh. This is so weird. weird. All right. So, on that note, on that weird, weird note, this is fun. We're going to very soon, if I have time, I'm going to hit her up this weekend and film, finish the other one. If not, it'll be up soon. Because, uh, really, let's be honest, that's the one you want to watch because you want, you, you want me to yell at her. And um, oh, that was so mean. I know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try so hard. Actually, take bets down below if you watch this. Take bets down below. How long into the video before I start before I start yelling at Leanna? Will I make it through one book, two books? It depends on what order we're talking about them. Are we start with Guns of the Dawn? No, we we're gonna end with Guns Guns of the Dawn the way we ended with Blackwing here because I liked I liked ending it on a like, hey, I really liked these things. So, well, I'm definitely, can, can I get through the entire shadow and summer discussion without, without losing my cool? Um, so, Anna, I have heard some of your objections and they are dumb. So oh, thanks for saying so. You're welcome. Would you like me to say so in a condescending tone of voice in your comments? 
I mean, I would prefer that. That's usually how I take it. That's what I'm saying. That's usually how you receive feedback, right? Mm -hmm. About your opinions. (laughs) People, guys, if you're going to be mean to someone in the comment section, like seriously, go find something else to do. Like seriously, there's. I mean, if you open your five part essay with, I know you're not going to read this, but I mean, just ask yourself who you're doing this for. Guys, find something to do. You're not constructive to anybody. And I feel bad. Like, Go, just go. Go touch some grass. Go, yeah, just go walk your dog. Walk the dog, take the dog on a walk. Look at a cloud. Leanna, I'm sick and I'm tired. So I'm leaving. <laughs> well, I'm sick and tired as well. <laughs> <laughs> sick and tired of your terrible opinion. All right, well, we'll see you. This was fun! The next one in which I will be viciously attacked. That's probably true. But until then, check out Alan's channel if you have not, because even if all of his opinions are wrong, he's very amusing when he shares them. So it's worth watching anyway. That's true. true. Come, (laughs) come join me. You should definitely, in fact, leave Leanna's channel and come join mine. Like, don't like unsubscribe to Leanna and come subscribe to me instead. This is a zero sum game. You can only watch one YouTube channel. So check yeah. out Alan's yeah. channel. That, that message is great. That message is really just for Klaus. Klaus. <laughs> Klaus. Klaus, you can do whatever you want. Klaus. You're a free and independent human being. Klaus, you know what side your bread is buttered on. I mean, not here because butter is not vegan. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Close the line. In broadcast. <laughs> Ended. it.